Hi, this is Anita Bozer, and for the Therapeutic Fitness Challenge, today we're going to do therapeutic calisthenics. So each of the exercises is going to be modified, and I will give you several modifications you can do yourself. First off, we're going to do jumping jacks. So rather than jumping, we don't want to bounce because I don't know about your discs, we're going to just step from side to side and raise the arms. So here's the first one. Raise your arms out to the side as you take your leg out. So one leg at a time, both arms lifting. If this is comfortable for you, you can even try raising your arms higher. Just keep going. You'll start getting your heart rate up without hurting your discs or your knees. So just do about 20 on each side or up to a minute. If your arms start getting sore, raising them up, go back to bent elbows. You can even do it bringing your elbows back. Just finding whatever works for your arms and keep your legs going. It becomes a little bit of a brain exercise too if you start switching it up. Okay, that's good. Next we're going to do push-ups, and we're going to do push-ups at the wall, that way you can make sure that your body has enough strength for them. If you do this very well, you can try these on a counter, as long as the counter is padded with a yoga mat. Start by facing the wall, and bring your hands just about shoulder height. Feel like your hands are glued to the wall, and so you don't need to hold them there, and let your elbows drop. When you do that, your shoulders will drop away from your ears, and you can feel these muscles engage through your side. That's your serratus anterior, and you want to feel that. If all you can do is feel that, that's good. Just stay here and keep dropping your elbows and lifting your chest and pressing your hands into the wall. That's enough of an exercise. If you start feeling your neck tighten up, just work at getting your arms to work, your shoulders to work without your neck. But if your neck is relaxed, go ahead and step back. Okay, and we're going to do springy push-ups. We don't want anything that's going to be jarring to your body. So go ahead and drop in, push off. Up in, push off. Nice and gentle on your wrists. If your wrists start to hurt, just go back to being at the wall. So do about 20 or 25 of these if you can. If all you can do is five, that's fine, and then just go back to the wall. And make sure you keep breathing. Breathing is really important. And that's push-ups. Next we're going to do jogging. So again, we want to be careful of your discs. So we're going to start by just lifting the heel on one foot and then the other. So one heel at a time, getting a little lift. And then if you can go a little faster, you might lift your foot a tiny bit off the ground. Right? So the arms are nice and relaxed to begin with. Or if you want to get a little bit of extra aerobics, you pump your arms. It's nice on your knees because your knees are definitely working, but they're not getting too much impact. Keep relaxing your shoulders, so if you're starting to lift your shoulders up, you want to let that go. And just jog for a minute, just to get your heart rate up. Also, it's good exercise for your thighs. So next we're going to do squats. Now it's very important with squats that you keep your knees lined up with the middle of your foot. You don't want your knees to go in or out. So it's not how far down you can go, it's how good you can keep your alignment. The other thing is you want your knees to not go forward of your toes. That's too hard on your knees. You want to keep sitting back like you're sitting back in a chair and keep your knees lined up. So again, upper body's nice and relaxed. This is another just lower body exercise. And go ahead and as you exhale, squat, look down, make sure your knees aren't going forward, press down through your feet to lift up. 
So squat down. I like to bring my arms forward for counterbalance. What you don't want to do is arch your low back. So keep your low back really long. Keep your chest lifted. So don't slouch. And sit down like you're sitting back in a chair and stand up. As a matter of fact, if you're worried about your balance, sit back in a chair, have a chair behind you, and you can just lightly touch down and come back up. But each time you come up, make sure you're pressing all the way through all of your feet. So you're not just on the outside of your feet and you're not letting your arches collapse in. I'm not counting, but do about 20 if you can, or as many as you can keeping good alignment. We're going to do calf raises next. So this is just coming up on all 10 toes and lowering down. It's kind of like jogging, but your knees aren't bending, so all the work's being done by your lower legs. It's actually really good for your balance as well. Try not to drop onto your outside toes, so your big toes press down just as much as your little toes, and try to feel all 10 toes. Now, you might um, only be able to do a few of these. It depends on how much your calves are conditioned. So just start to feel, you feel a little burn in your calves and begin to learn to listen to your body so you know when too much is too much. Try again to make it up to 20 if you can. And just make note if you can't do 20 because every time you do it, you'll probably be able to do more. This is a core balancing exercise. So come onto your hands and knees. Make sure you spread your fingers very wide and lift your left arm up, make sure your neck is relaxed, and if you can, also lift your right leg. Now you don't want to let your hip drop, so keep everything nice and level and your neck relaxed. Hold that for a couple breaths, come down, and then start by raising your right arm, and if that's steady, raise your left leg. Again, take a couple of breaths here, trying to keep from rotating and come back down. And lift your left arm up, make sure your neck is relaxed, and if you can, also lift your right leg. Now you don't want to let your hip drop, so keep everything nice and level and your neck relaxed. Hold that for a couple breaths, come down, and then start by raising your right arm and if that's steady, raise your left leg. Again, take a couple of breaths here, trying to keep from rotating, and come back down. And lift your left arm up, make sure your neck is relaxed, and if you can, also lift your right leg. Now you don't want to let your hip drop, so keep everything nice and level and your neck relaxed. Hold that for a couple breaths, come down, and then start by raising your right arm, and if that's steady, raise your left leg. Again, take a couple of breaths here, trying to keep from rotating, and come back down. Now we're going to do dips. This is a good exercise for the back of your arms. Keep them nice and firm. So just sitting on the floor with your knees bent, feet on the floor, reach back with your arms. It's actually kind of nice to get a good opening through your chest. You don't want to drop here. You want to keep your chest nice and lifted. And if this gives you any tingling sensations in your arms, then just stay here. Rather than doing the exercise, just keep working on opening your arms before you try to strengthen them. And then press through your hands and lift yourself off the ground. And slowly lower and lift and lower and lift. This time I'm going to keep count of how many. So that's four, five, six, seven, Stop any time you feel your arms getting too tired or if you feel your neck starting to grab on.
I think that was 10. Whether you're in a therapeutic program or not, I never, ever, 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 ever recommend doing crunches. They're very hard on your low back. But I know everybody wants to have good abs, so I recommend what I call the anti-crunch. So lie on your back and feel your pelvis even on the floor so you're not twisted to the right or left. And see, can you lift one leg up without rotating your pelvis? and the other. If in order to lift your knee up you have to tip or twist, that's all you do is you just put your hands right here on your hips and as you exhale lift one leg up and then the other. And you'll notice some days it's easier than others. Okay? If that's easy for you, bring both legs up and then lower one leg down and the other. Just make sure you're able to stay very stable. Your legs are doing the work, but it's your abdomen that's actually getting most of the benefit. It's not a leg exercise, it's an ab exercise. Now if that's easy for you, then you can bring your legs up here and lower them down one at a time. Again, your pelvis stays absolutely perfectly still, not moving even one millimeter. And so your low back is not moving at all either. You definitely don't want to lift your legs with your low back. So choose the variation that works for you, either straight legs lowering or straight legs going out towards the floor or dropping down one toe at a time, or starting from the floor and lifting one leg at a time. That will actually help give you a very flat stomach. Plank is another great core exercise, and I'm going to give you four different modifications for it. Go ahead and um, come onto your hands and knees. Again, fingers spread really wide and hands right underneath your shoulders. And then move your knees back a tiny bit. Pull your belly button towards your spine to engage your core and then lean forward. So your chest and hips drop down, but your belly button keeps lifting up towards the ceiling. If you need to do this for your low back, that's okay, but keep trying to drop your hips, but keep your abdominal, abdomen engaged. If that's hard on your wrists, you can do it on your forearms. So bring your elbows right underneath your shoulders and clasp your hands, move your knees back, and then lean forward. Keep pressing your arms down so that your shoulders don't get compressed. You can also do this with your knees on the ground. Now plank is an exercise you can certainly skip. If you're feeling tension in your shoulders, you can just go back to the Superman exercise. That works great. Full plank is from your hands and knees, stepping one leg back and then the other, and then leaning forward so your shoulders are right over your hands. Again, drop your hips and spread your shoulders wide apart from each other. However, that's something to work for. Start with your knees on the ground. Start with your forearms, if that's more comfortable for your wrists. And just make sure you can stay open through your shoulders.